you're a 17-year-old boy, and you walk into the police station again later that night anyway. Would anyone here have done that? And now you find yourself, when you have tried to turn yourself in, in a situation where the media has made you guilty, has named you a white supremacist. Oh, oh, and by the way, that also came out of the mouth of the president, well, former vice president of the United States because he was trying to earn votes. You think that might sway the jury? Uh, so here is Richards. I think he did do a relatively effective job, the defense, yesterday. Uh, and this is clip J1. Um, in addressing Binger's lies, it's about the only thing that I think he did that was effective. Ladies and gentlemen, this case is not a game. It is my client's life. We don't play fast and loose with the facts, pretending that Mr. Rosenbaum was citizen A number one guy. He was a bad man, he was there, he was causing trouble, he was a rioter, and my client had to deal with him that night alone. Back on November 2nd, when this case started, did you hear one word out of Mr. Binger's mouth about provocation? You didn't, because it was never said. But when his case explodes in his face, now he comes out with provocation. The things that I just pointed out to you, why is that a problem? Because one, he's lying. Two, he's misrepresenting. Or he wasn't prepared when he started this trial, and his closing argument has been a change to try and fit what has come out. Okay, so look, let me just, I don't think it was that effective. Look, here's, here's what I think he should have said. I don't think that you go there and you explain the letter of the law to jurors. That's what this whole trial has been about. And I obviously think that Kyle is not guilty, and I appreciate the valiant effort from the defense. But you don't say they act like he was a, an A1 guy. No, he was a bad guy. No, here's what you say. Here's what I would have said if I'm defending Kyle Rittenhouse. Look, we're not even supposed to address the elephant in the room here when we're talking about Rosenbaum, and I won't, and so I won't, because I've been barred from it, even though they've tried to bring up Kyle Rittenhouse's statements regarding disdain for rioters and looters. Let's at the very least admit that that night Rosenbaum was acting violently and erratically, which with a very quick search you could find out as to why perhaps he was aroused or perhaps he was just in a state of heated aggression as he always is and you wouldn't say he's a bad guy what you would say is this man was a repeated lifelong violent sexual predator and if you don't want to use that uh, objection fine violent felon who specifically took an interest in children clear enough are we all good since we're playing fast and rules here by the rule book and my client went there and for over a day, for the entire day, was providing service and help to a community that was being redone. By the way, his community, his community where he worked, his community where his father lived. And Rosenbaum, by contrast, the moment he was discharged from a psychiatric facility, didn't even go home. He picked up a weapon and decided to seek out a minor in between light and, light and dumpster fires at gas stations. Are you starting to get the picture? But let's say that's not the only, okay, then it's self-defense. After my client was running, if, look, put yourself in Kyle Rittenhouse's shoes. You're a minor and a man with a balaclava shirtless and a raging erection is chasing you into an alleyway as you shout friendly, friendly, friendly at the top of your lungs until you run into a barricade where you can no longer run any further, hear a gunshot and turn around and see this ginger pedophile ghost so close to you that there are, and the record shows, soot marks on his hands from the rifle. And after shooting him and circling back and feeling guilty to check on him, you are then chased away, asked what you are doing, clearly communicating you are going to the police, while people who've been burning down the entire city and creating a permanent Permanently disabled class, by the way, of elderly business owners in Kenosha, as we've shown you, beating the shit out of not just property, but also harming people. This is going through my client's mind. Kyle Rittenhouse. 
hearing the phrases, cranium him, get him, kill him, which you've seen on camera. And then someone hit him with a skateboard in the head. Then he was drop kicked into the concrete, both of whom reached for his gun. And then he had a gun pointed at him point blank, not he's a bad guy. This is someone who, ha who has had prior violations with firearms and no problem pulling a trigger into my client's, as a matter of fact, if he pulled a trigger into my client's head, he would be following the instruction of, instructions of the mob, cranium him. You are a 17 year old boy, what would you do? Do you think you'd have the clarity of thought to only shoot his bicep? No. Do you think after that, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, do you think after that that you would have the clarity of thought to go to the police with your hands up, rifle down, tell them exactly what you did, and after they told you to get out of the road, possibly because they thought that you were another one of the armed Antifa militia who were there days earlier attacking the police, they said, get out of the road, you're a 17-year-old boy, and you walk into the police station again later that night anyway. Would anyone here have done that? And now you find yourself, when you have tried to turn yourself in, in a situation where the media has made you guilty, has named you a white supremacist. Oh, oh, and by the way, that also came out of the mouth of the president, well, former vice president of the United States because he was trying to earn votes. You think that might sway the jury? What would you do if you were a 17 year old? And then you not only have to deal with the media, you not only have to deal with the man running for the presidency, you not only have to deal with the mob, by the way, have you noticed them on the court steps saying that if they don't get it, they'll shut it down or burn it down? Have you seen that? There's more footage you can watch on that. I know you're not allowed to right now because you're not allowed. I don't know if that counts as being involved with the case so much as making sure you go out the back door, those people want this 17-year-old to burn. Don't know how many charges exist amongst them. But with all that being said and done, then you find yourself at this trial where footage from the FBI, which completely exonerates him of any wrongdoing, was hidden. You think at 17, you would have, the, would have had the clarity of thought to act as he did? This is not about a bad guy that night who needed to be taken care of and a kid at the wrong place at the wrong time. That's not what's happening here. This is a kid who was doing the right thing at the wrong place through no fault of his own, but through the fault of people like Rosenbaum and Grace Crutz and Huber, who made Kenosha a less safe place. And you all know here, as citizens of Kenosha, who sit here on this jury, that the cops and your politicians didn't do a damn thing about it, and neither did anyone in this room. So a 17-year-old kid did something. And you know that that something he did was cleaning up graffiti, providing medical care, and putting out fires until he was almost killed by serial violent felons who had no problem taking his life. You're 17 years old. Look, if, if this doesn't count as self-defense, then you might as well all light the match to the city yourself. Watch Louder with Crowder live, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.